We've been a sponsor now since 2008. This gives us an opportunity really to uh, participate in the conference, to network with property owners, with customers and other vendors, and really to demonstrate the power of our technology. We'll talk a lot about audiovisual, talk about a lot of technology amenities that owners are putting into their properties. We're going to talk about car charging stations. We're going to talk about what the providers are doing in terms of new technology, new services. Um, so it's a it's a pretty broad agenda covering a lot of a lot of subjects. Over 25 percent of our customers, our subscribers for voice, video, and data, are MDU dwellers. So we work with all the large property owners, developers, managers, REITs to make sure that they have technology that they need, fiber enabled technology, uh, to differentiate themselves. What we're showing with the models is that it is very possible uh, to make money in fiber to the home. Our capital investment in the company is, is uh, quite substantial, but we know that to bring the services to our customers, uh, you know, we have to keep investing and keep migrating our network forward. Over the three years, we ended up with a 70% adoption rate of broadband. So, I mean, the, the people's wanting it. It's just a matter of being able to get it to all the people that do want it. It's ARPU is the game. Revenue is the game. Essentially, I think that the improved efficiency of an electric utility will pay for the fiber network. It's the anchor institutions that are the base for your build out. And if, if you've got uh, your business person with an open access network connection, your costs for internet and telephone are typically going to go down by 50 to 75 percent. We can deliver now a true giga gigabit for $1,000 a month. Yells, it's alive, it's alive. <laughs> Economic development is what we want to bring to life, and that has happened in many, many places across the United States. We have leaders from those communities who will tell us what it took. For me, it's all about economic development. It was always about giving our community a little bit of an upper hand, something that we're, as we're competing with other cities, other states, and other countries around the world. Um, as, as people look for a place to locate those businesses that can locate anywhere, Healthcare applications, education applications, security applications. It really is broadband for whole life. It allows me to, the, the citizens of the towns that we're doing it for to take control of their broadband future. So the idea is, is it possible to do a thing like this on a smaller scale with local money and then grow it the old-fashioned bootstrap way? The only way to get to the point where it's profitable and we're paying interest on the shares is for everyone to pitch in. So there's been a phenomenal amount of voluntary work. We have people out at the moment walking the routes where the fibre's going to go, mapping it. Uh, we have people doing the accounts, drawing up way leaves, every, making tea and cakes for the people who dig. It's all at the moment voluntary. In the Recovery Act, we've had such a historic opportunity to reinvest in our nation's um, communities. And so we have so many great success stories across the United States. So we're pushing hard with all of our grantees to make sure that they're able to get the projects built on budget and on schedule and deliver all the benefits that they've promised to their communities. But we still need to have a critical mass of communities and a critical mass of users of the world's best networks because that's how you develop the future. So I think there's uh, something for everyone who A to Z own broadband.